we're live. It's just going the cameras this way, so and sometimes I'll walk out of the way. But um, so this is Math One Twenty One Introductory Algebra, no, Intermediate Algebra. Okay, good. In the right place. I have an Introductory Algebra in the after in the evening. So, uh, and I'm Michael Little Crow. I'll be your instructor. I think I talked too much last class, and my <clears throat> voice was sort of going out. So I've got this class and one more this evening. So we'll see how how I make it through. <clears throat> Usually the second day I don't talk as much. I get you working and, and we get through things. But uh, So today we will take a look at the syllabus and just kind of basically see this course structure. I will then take, yes, of course. Anyone else? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, no problem. If you got questions, interrupt me right away because you might forget them. At least I, I do. So it's in... I'm, I'm not so formal, so we'll uh, make sure everything works for everyone. Good. Um, we'll go over the syllabus to get the, the overall course structure. I'll introduce you to the Math AS. How many of you have used Math AS before? Many of you, but if you haven't, that's okay. It's an online textbook homework system that we use that's free. It actually will have all the resources that you need in it, so there's nothing to buy. However, there is a packet of stuff you might want to buy because it's sometimes cheaper to buy it that way than to print it all off yourself. But I'll, I'll show you all of that so that you'll basically know how to get started in the class. And then I'm going to leave the content and we're going to talk about something I'm more interested in, which is sort of uh, the culture of mathematics and a few techniques and more how to think about math in ways uh, that I have found helpful for students, especially in algebra, because sometimes when you're having difficulty understanding a concept, it's because you're coming at it from the hard way to understand. And oftentimes I found we math teachers teach things in the hard way, where sometimes there's an easier way to understand it, an easier way to do it. And that's what you're going to look is, is some alternate ways from ancient India that are three to 5,000 years old of doing math in a more easy, gentle, compassionate way. Um, and so that as we go through our algebra, when we do find that we're struggling with something, we'll try to find if there's alternate ways to look at it, alternate ways to understand it so that we get great success. Um, and on top of that, you get, I uh, can't remember how much, you get some extra credit. So whatever, I think it's, oh, 40 points. It's, I guess it's not extra credit, but it's, it's like one whole assignment. So uh, it's not too heavy into the math, but you'll learn some techniques. And I'll show you something that actually might get you a free lunch. Anybody in for a free lunch? Of course. So I'll show you a technique that uh, has worked for my students in the past. They've gotten free lunches. They've gotten bottles of wine. They've gotten all sorts of things. I, I love one student who went back. He got three free lunches from the same group of, of friends that, that kept falling for this one math trick uh, that I'm going to teach you. And so share it with your parents, with your friends, with your brothers or sisters. Uh, unsuspecting people, you're going to be a math genius in uh, just a few minutes. At least you'll look like one. I'm not a math genius, but I can sometimes look like one if I use the right tricks. Okay, so that's what we're going to share. So let's uh, let's get started with the syllabus. And I was a little concerned. I, I wear this Bluetooth so that because it records, it might it gets the sound better. Halfway through the class, it went out, the battery went dead or something. So I thought maybe the second half of class was like silent, but the I guess this was picking up the, uh, the sound anyway. So that's good. What were we doing? Syllabus, right. Okay. Uh, also, I am dyslexic, which means I sometimes talk in circles, think in circles. Sometimes I transpose things. So, But it's, uh, it's something that was a disability that I, I've learned also is powerful when you use it in the right way. So, um, and while I'm looking for this, I'll, I sort of found out about it. I was, I've never been tested, but my, uh, when I was almost about ready to drop out of college, uh, the second time through my math series, because I was going into engineering and I didn't do so well the first time through. Now you're getting scared. Your math teacher doesn't do good at math. But uh, there's a good side of it. Um, the second time through, I found uh, I had a, I was at Portland State University, and the teacher I had that semester, he had his daughters tested for uh, learning disabilities because they were having difficulties. 
Um, and while they were there, they tested him and found out, they told him he was dyslexic and that he didn't know how to read. And he says, what do you mean? I got a PhD. Of course I know how to read. And they says, well, no, you pick information off of a page, but you don't read like a normal person, right? Uh, but he was a brilliant person. He, he just, you know, he would scan a page. And I found that's sort of what I do. I don't really, I sometimes don't read things. And that's why in my English class, when I did the book report, I always had extra stuff in there because I guess I picked out a few pieces and made it more interesting in my mind. Uh, and they said, that was never in the book. And I said, yeah, it was. I remember reading it. But I guess it was the part I made up. Anyway, it, it helped me through math. And um, more importantly, it helped me identify some strengths that can come from being slightly dyslexic. Um, and so the thing I found was that uh, because he, you know, sometimes would go in circles and stuff, it was very helpful for me because it was the way I thought. It was very frustrating for some other students. So I try to adapt to everybody. And so if I start to get on too many tangents or go in circles or something, say just, hey, little girl, come back to earth. Uh, let's get on with the lesson or something. So pull me back. Okay. Okay. So we got our syllabus. Everyone got a copy. Good. Let's see again. Um, let's see. So the front page, my contact information, my office hours. Uh, I'm going to try Tuesday doing online office hours, kind of with this system. Uh, and my goal is that I, I haven't worked out the details yet, uh, but that you would sort of be able to log into something or get online and ask me questions or send me an email and I'd be able to be online and stream and uh, I got a little tablet and we can do math online so that you don't have to necessarily come here you can anywhere you have internet connectivity we can do it um, just a moment now that we're going let me grab this I have another appointment this afternoon so hello Okay, so contact information, um, office hours, trying online office hours. Um, and then there's basically what the course is about, course objectives. These are the things we're going to do. Um, and basically, most of you have, uh, if you've had introductory algebra, or you're, you may have tested into this. What we're going to look at is the algebra of uh, linear equations, which if you've had math, 90-ish, 90, 90, 91, 92, it'll just be pretty much a review of that last part. Uh, lines, straight lines, y equals mx plus b. So we, we take a look at that and functions. Uh, then we're going to look at exponential, which is the mathematics of percentages, um, exponents. And then we look at quadratics, which are the mathematics of x squareds. Um, and we look at radical and rational functions. And everything, and that's all kind of in there, Everything we look at uh, will prepare you well for college algebra, which is math 150 or 151, or possibly pre-calculus if you've had trigonometry before, depending upon where you're going, that's math 187. But this course is designed, it's the prerequisite for those going on to more technical math, uh, sciences, psychology. Uh, so if you need a lot more math, that's the route you're going. If you know that your major needs math 141, this is no longer the prerequisite. 
you don't need to take this class. I had three people, I said, and I always say this, and I still had three people who went all the way through the class and then they're taking 141 for me. I says, oh, maybe they like taking math, but if, you know, if you're taking 141, this class is no longer required. It, two years ago, it used to be. So sometimes you're, you, I guess students who are working off an older program, they think they need this to take 141, but you don't, okay? So is everyone kind of in the right place? So you're going on, you know, you're going on to college algebra um, and possibly on to, to calculus, either business calculus or calculus calculus, okay? So that's the goal of this one. This is a course that will get you well prepared because when you look at the content for Math 150, it's really the same thing. It just goes more deeper and it's um, more applications. So our goal here is to give you is it more skill based, how to use a graphing calculator to solve things, how to do a lot of the technical stuff. We do a little bit of applications, but primarily what we're going to focus on is, um, is the skill part of it, building the skills. Okay, so far so good. Okay. And if you're not sure, talk with me because I, again, I don't want you to sit through even half a semester or a couple, you know, if we can get you into the class that you need to be in. But if you need to be in college algebra, this is, this is a great step to get you successful. Got this uh, streaming software all set up last week, and now it's all messed up. So, I'm trying to make sure it gets the whole screen. Okay, there we go. Okay. The text um, calculator, uh, first of all, you do need a graphing calculator. Uh, I recommend the TI-84, it's the one I understand, it's the one I, I'm basically that we show you. The textbook has all the, the tricks and how to use it. You can use, Casio makes a great, actually Casio makes a better graphing calculator, but they didn't give them out free to teachers, so there's no curriculum basic built around them, and they're a little bit harder to use or, because I'm not used to them. Uh, but the TI, that's where all the instructions are. Uh, HP, I don't, they used to have a, that's the one I had when I was in school, but they, again, they were too expensive and didn't make the cut. So, uh, but any graphing system will work. Some people will download apps onto their phones. There are some good apps uh, that do the graphing and such, uh, and I'm happy to work with you on that. But uh, if you get one of these, you'll be right in shape and, and then you'll have it to practice with. Uh, you can get them for $10, a, you can rent them for $10 a semester uh, from the media center. Uh, but you want to check in early, so if you don't have one and want to rent one, do that pretty quickly so that you can get, and basically the $10 is for replacing batteries and such. Um, but calculators are definitely needed. Yes? Can I still remind you guys that you made with that silver and glass? Sure. Colors and they're pretty much yeah. Uh, there's also a TI-83 works just as well. It's just got a slightly different chip, but the instructions are the same. So if you have a TI-83, it'll work. Any of the TI-84s will work. Uh, this one's is the newer one. It's the C the plus CE, so it's color, which is kind of nice. It's also got a rechargeable battery. But uh, any of them, pretty much the the layouts are fairly similar, and those are what I'll demonstrate. So a lot of the class, a lot of the things is as I show you how to solve problems, I will be using one of those. And part of this is is a calc how to use a calculator class to solve the problems. Uh, okay. Textbook. Uh, there is a printed workbook that's available from the bookstore. I don't know. Has anyone gotten it yet? I think it's twenty five thirty dollars. Uh, it's also all available in the Math AS that I'm going to show you next. So it's all electronically available in there. You can print off some of the pages that you need or print it all off. It's just that if you're going to use it all, 
it's probably cheaper to buy it from the bookstore already pre-printed. Because if you use your student account here, they charge you 10 cents per page. You have $25 credit to start with for registering, but $10 a page will use that up pretty quick. Um, so, but you also may do just fine without ever printing it off. You might just have it on the screen, write it down, however you want to work. So that's the other part of this class is it really, uh, I, I encourage and expect and want you to explore what works best for you. So I, I make as few rules as possible. In fact, I only have two rules, um, which we'll get to next. Uh, but uh, those two rules cover everything, and you'll see that. Okay. Uh, so points, grades. Anyone interested in grades? Nobody's interested in grades, right? No. Okay. I certainly want to pass the class, and certainly, you know, while C's do get degrees, they say, I've always said, if I get an A, I'm more happy than getting a C or a B. Uh, and I'll work with you to make that happen. Okay. So what we have is, I'll show you in, in Math AS, we have things called learning activities. There are, I got this right. I think I've got 12 chap. No, how many? Yeah. These, they keep changing. We'll, we'll look it up, but I think there's like 12 chapters. No, there must have only been 10. They moved it down to 10. There used to be 12. So there's 10 because 10 times 36 is 360. So each one's worth 36 points. You get 360 points. Good. Uh, there'll be four exams based on the concepts, uh, one for linear, one for exponential, one for quadratic, and then the last rational radicals, Those the last two sections will be combined into one test. Uh, and then there's one final exam that's a department exam that's comprehensive over everything, just to make sure you can put everything together. Because again, you're going to take the same concepts and you're going to work with them in Math 150, so we want you to be successful. Um, and basically just get enough points, get 900, which is 90% or above, you got an A, um, and so forth. I put a caveat here on, on the A, the additional thing is you must complete all of the homework, at least at 70%, because I do give extra credit, so it could be possible you could get an A and actually have not done a section or something. Um, and also that you'll have attended 100% of the class. And again, what I'm gonna do is you'll be able to attend 100% uh, because of the online streaming. So if you're not here in class, at least take a look at the video. Now, when you're watching the video, yeah, you can fast forward and such, but um, what we'll do is we'll put a few little quizzes off of what's in the video just to make sure you watch it. So there'll be an attendance quiz, but it'll be a very simple one. So for today, the attendance quiz will be just a word of the day. And even if you're here, the way I'm, I'm going to start, I mean, I'll take attendance the first day just to check everything out. But the other way I take attendance, instead of me physically taking it, there'll be a little quiz and it'll, it'll say, what was the word of the day? And you'll get four choices and there'll be one correct word. So I'm not very creative today. So who's got a word of the day for us? What would be a good word of the day? So remember the word paintbrush, because that's our word of the day. It's up there. If you watch the video, you'll see it up there, I think. Oh, I'm kind of getting it cut off, I guess. Let's see. There, now it shows. Paintbrush, okay. So paintbrush is our word of the day uh, and what we use for our quiz. Okay. And we'll do stuff like this just to make sure that you kind of watched it. Um, so again, I want you to be attending class I was watching a thing, uh, listening to a thing on NPR a couple days ago, and it spoke about behavior change and how hard it is to change behaviors. And I was thinking, you know, some students are there all the time. Some students, you know, they miss when they have to. But I, I know there's some students that if they didn't have to miss, they would, you know, they could do so much better or they could have passed the class. But what they said is, you know, instead of trying to change people's behaviors, maybe our system should think about trying to adapt. And I thought, hmm, maybe I'll just stream the class. So if you can't be here, you can be here, right? We got the technology, so we'll see how it works. Um, and um, I appreciate any of your feedback. I know it's not going to look real great because it's just kind of catching everything that goes on, but um, we'll try. But I'm committed to giving it a try. I've never done this before, uh, but we'll see how it works. Okay, so that's kind of the goal. The bottom line, though, is that as long as you can do well in the course, which like, you know, if you got an A on the final, you blow it away, that means you probably understood it pretty well. 
um, I'll get you that A. So I'll work with you. I look at I look at grading as a holistic process. I give you a first step that if you do all this stuff, you get enough points, you can be guaranteed. However, if this doesn't work, because I know some of you, I've had st great students who just did not like to do homework. Um, I had this one kid, it was uh, when I was doing high school, he was 10th grader, he, he could just solve the problems in his head. He'd say them out loud. He wouldn't even, he was so lazy, he didn't want to, well, not lazy, but he, he just didn't even want to write the answers down. So he wouldn't even do that, but he was just, and he'd get 100% on all the tests. Uh, but since I was only the student teacher, the, the teacher actually failed him. He said he didn't do any homework. He did, you know, I don't care what he did on the test. I thought, you know, now this kid has to retake this class that he already knows and, you know, even be more bored. But so that's the way I think. So I look at things. If you can show me that you understand the material at an A level, I'm, I'm all in, more than happy to give you an A. So this is one way, but work with me, learn the material, and we'll make it happen so that you get uh, the grade that you're, that's appropriate for you, okay? And that makes you be able to go on, okay? Because as you go into Math 150, you're going to need to know this material uh, to be successful. Okay. This is my two rules. We also have a qualitative method. Uh, it's kind of in the uh, PowerPoint too, but I'll just do it here. So my two rules are, is that as humans, we're responsible for our actions. When we do something, we're responsible for it. I remember, I think it was third grade, we'd go to lunch or whatever, and one of the kids would go into the, you know, we'd go wash our hands, and one of the kids was always yelling. And then we'd always get in trouble because that one kid was yelling. Um, and after a while, you know what? I realized I was that kid that was yelling. I just, you know, I guess I was so excited to go wash my hands or something. I don't know. But then halfway through this, I said, I'm that kid that's yelling. Why am I always yelling? I don't know. But then I finally owned it, and I stopped yelling, and we stopped getting in trouble. But I guess my friends were good because they didn't tell on me. Uh, they must have known I was the one that was yelling. But we have to, we have to admit when, when something's going wrong or something, you know, it's, it's, it could be our actions. So we've got two kinds of actions. And that's the only two there are. Is there are skillful actions uh, and unskillful actions. Does that make sense? What would you think a skillful action would be? How would you know if something was skillful? Doing your homework. Why? But how would you know that's skillful? Practicing. Practicing. And what's the result? You pass the test. So that, then you know that was skillful. Now, you could still be doing your homework, but you don't pass the test, and you say, well, maybe listening to the TV or the radio wasn't skillful. Sometimes it is. Some people, I, in fact, I worked with a student. She was, uh, she was supposed to take it to the testing center, but she took it in my class because we were doing tutored math, and it was kind of noisy. She actually did better with the noise than she did in a private room. So she found uh, the private room, her, her mind was going over time. But when there was noise going on, it, got, it actually helped her to focus. I said, so, you know, here are all the, all the doctors said that she needs a quiet room to take tests so she can focus. No, they were wrong. She needed some noise so she could focus. Uh, so that's the way you should have to develop is, is there's not one right thing that's always skillful or always unskillful. But skillful gets us to where we're going, what we want to do. And I add the one thing, it doesn't harm anybody. It doesn't harm ourselves. doesn't harm someone else. If it harms somebody, that's automatically unskillful. If it doesn't get us what we want, that's also unskillful. So that your goal this semester is kind of to develop yourself to see what things are skillful for you and what things are unskillful. And as we find those things, try to develop the skillful, do those things more often. Sometimes they're not very fun, I'll be honest. But sometimes they're, they, they get things done. The unskillful things sometimes are a lot of fun, but they might not be the right thing to be doing. So we kind of try to let them go. Okay, Jelly donuts, they're really fun, but uh, they're not very skillful for me. Uh, some people can handle it, but me, I see them, I, I'll eat the whole dozen. So. Um, we find those things out, okay? So far, so good. So those are the two class rules. It's just try to be more skillful. Attendance is good. It's important. It's here, um, and I, I want to, in some way, as we post these, um, if you're not here, you should be able to be here by watching the videos and engaging in the class. Okay. And then also, we're going to see with Math AS. Each time you log in, it puts in a login date, so I can see that you're interacting with the class. Uh, the one thing is if you're not here and you're not interacting, um, 
we don't know what's going to happen. So we need some way of interaction. Okay, there's policies on withdrawal. And then this is really the last page. It's uh, probably in there. If you go online, there's a little bit more to the syllabus, but most of that is uh, information that, we're, that the college provides for us. It's uh, about various services and stuff, and you're welcome to pull that up and look at it. I only print up to here. So this will uh, form sort of the basis of our course. I don't have any set due dates, so you can never be late. But we do have to get things. I guess there's sort of a due date is that by the time we take the first exam, you should be ready for it is sort of it. But um, you know, the, as far as homework and stuff, you should be working towards it. I don't put any particular due dates. Because I found with the special our system, we've got to do that. I've not only got to put a date, I've got to put a time. And so if it's 11.59 on this date, but you finished it up at 11 or 12, so five minutes later, then you don't get credit or you get kicked out or something. I just want you to learn it. I don't care whether you learned it today, tomorrow, or next week. I just want you to be able to learn it. So I, I just don't want to manage all this time stuff. I want you to be responsible for that part of it. And just know that this is sort of a, a suggested pace. If you get a little bit behind it, well, then you're just there's just more work to do later. But you know your schedules are probably busy and, and such, and you, you've got different time pockets where you can work on things. Um, and sometimes this weekend, I got a big family wedding or whatever. So that, but next weekend's all free. I can get caught up. Those are the things I allow you to work through, find out what works best for your schedule. Okay. Uh, we've got about two lessons, uh, two days for each of the lessons. Uh, I just kind of, we got 10 lessons. Let's spread them out. Let's do this. Uh, it may not necessarily take all that time. And what I tend to do is show the lesson like when we get to like, we're not even getting to lesson one till next week. So, um, you know, this week we're just kind of getting the introduction, getting into the class and feeling comfortable. This also is a math 121, which means it's four credits, not three. There's a 122 version of this class that's three credits. Um, so basically it's got the same content. You'll take the same final exam. But what this one has is an extra hour of class each week. What I do with that extra hour is I use that sort of for tutoring. So what you'll see is that the class, I will not be up here lecturing all the way until, what, 2.45, whatever it is. Um, but I'll probably be have some sort of class presentation up to maybe 2.15 or so, maybe 2 o'clock. We'll see what it is. Uh, and then the rest of the time will be time where you can start working on uh, individually and in groups. Uh, so it means you're going to need some of the worksheets with you. Those are in Math AS. You can bring your computer or laptop. Oh, I guess that's a computer. Um, but uh, tablets or even phones. Uh, that's the nice thing if you have to, you know, these phones have big screens now. You can actually do homework over the Internet with a phone if you can get reception. That's one of the issues here. For our assignments, do you want us to print them out or do you want us to like use this sheet in the background? Uh, you're going to see it's a math AS. You're just going to enter them into the computer, and it will grade them for you and record it. So you don't have to. Now, you may want to. There's. I'll show you. There's many lesson things where you may want to write down on your own. But again, those are more your notes for your use. Um, okay. So there's there should be a fairly good pace where the first day is going to be heavy on the content. We'll get a little bit of time. Sometimes I'll save a little bit, uh, but sometimes there's not much more content. Sometimes the second day is, might be com uh, a lot of work day, might be a little bit of review, and then more time to get some homework done um, and get some questions answered. And that's why, again, you'll, we'll see how things go. Attendance, while it's not, I, I want you to be here one way or the other, you also have the, ac the access to watching it online. Of course, if all we're doing is tutoring, that's probably where I'll cut this part off. But, uh, you know, so you at least know what's going on. You can keep on track. Sound reasonable? Good. Okay. Uh, so our first uh, this is February 12th, and the dates are the Monday of the week. So that's 12, 13, 14 on uh, Valentine's Day. Why did I put an exam on Valentine's Day? I don't know. Uh, but we'll do it. So Valentine's Day, we're having an exam. 
And before we have the exam, I do give you a practice test. I usually give it earlier. It will also be posted in Canvas so you can download it and it'll get you prepared well for the test. So it's very, the questions are very similar to the questions on the test. Okay, and then we go through it again. And uh, so this is just our basic course layout. We got spring break and then we've got uh, lessons six through 10 after spring break. Okay, and four exams, and then a final exam, and then we've got the whole last week, uh, so a whole week for reviewing, which again, I'll give you a practice exam. There's some videos to watch also on how to solve them, and basically, we take everything we've learned, put them together, and make sure we kind of understand them. All the exams, ex except for the final, I'm not allowed to do this, but all the other exams, the first four exams, you will get a page of notes, so you'll develop that as you know, and, and that's it'll be good to take the practice test. Oftentimes people take the questions off that and you know exactly what you need to have notes on. Uh, so you will get a page of notes. So I'm not testing your ability to memorize formulas or such. You can write all those things down and even methods. I'm, we're testing your ability to apply what you've learned. Okay. Let's see. Final exam is on Wednesday at that time. It's a, it's a notice it's, they have us doing earlier, 11.30 a.m. Um, so again, as we get closer to that, we'll, we'll make sure it works with your schedules. If there's issues, we'll, we'll work around it and uh, make sure you're able to successfully complete the course. Okay, questions? All good? Okay. So then, let's put this down. So open up Math AS, and I notice I think about four of you, four or five of you have already actually registered. I've got it set up where uh, it sends me an uh, email or a message in Math AS every time someone registers, and then I'll mark you off because we really need, I need to have you registered by this week, if at all possible. Um, let's see where I want to go, Math AS. So this, oh, let me log out. This is also the last two pages of the syllabus are the instructions for how to register for Math AS. Um, and if you don't have an account, you can go register as a new student. You fill out that information. It sends an email to the email address you give it. And then you click on that link and it verifies that it works. So then it comes back here. You go ahead and log in. Okay, and again, we'll be done a little bit early uh, today so that if you if you need to get it done, uh, we can do it. If, if you don't have it done by Monday, um, we'll take some time. And again, they can help out in the tutor center or something, but the main thing is get a Math AS account. And then once you do, you're able to log in. And this is what I mean, I get messages. These are people enrolling in the class. I check them off who's enrolled and who and then I clear it out. So um, this is where it is. What you'll do when you come here, though, is you have to, even though if you have Math AS before, you can still log into it, you need to enroll in this class. So you click on Enroll in the class. And again, all of you will do this because even registering for Math AS itself, you're not in the class until you register here. So what's our code number that goes in there? On the back here, right? So 6460. So that's the course ID, 6460. You'll put that in. And then the enrollment key, 2018. I just use the year, so I don't have to remember anything. You'll click sign up. I get the message that I'm an instructor, so I can't enroll. Um, but you'll get the message that you've been enrolled in the class. And then when you go back to the main page, here, you'll see Math 121 in your account. And so now you are enrolled for this class. When you come in here, you'll see this. And I have fun making that. It was, uh, there's a lot of stuff online now. I just go pull out a video of some fireworks. And uh, anyway, I thought I'd make it a little bit more fun. Uh, and it will disappear after a while. So if it's annoying to anybody or something, it'll be gone soon after a week. But I thought. Might as well welcome. 
There's a link to the syllabus here as well as in Canvas. I guess I never showed Canvas yet, but I'll, I'll, maybe I'll do that next. Um, but you've already got the syllabus, but here it is if you lose it. There are some uh, course materials and resources. Uh, there is the full book. You can download and print it. It's right here. Again, electronic form, uh, or you could buy it from the bookstore. Or also, as you do through each of the lessons, the part of the book that you need will be available just in that lesson. That's the way I kind of do it, rather than having a big old file with a lot of pages. Um, but those are those are there. And what you'll do basically is uh, there's these ten lessons, and each of the lessons flow pretty much the same. So in lesson one, you'll see at the top there's a mini lesson. We call them mini lessons. There's the workbook pages. Again, if you went to the bookstore and bought it, you have it already. If not, you can download it, print it out if you want. The goal is that those things are used, the, the mini lesson workbook is used sort of as a uh, outline that you'll work through the mini lessons. So you only need to come to here if, uh, if you don't have the workbook. If you already have the workbook, you've got it. Okay, so then I'll just click here and I'll show you. It's just the workbook. And it's just the workbook for this lesson. So it's you know broken out for us. It's all here. Okay. Then you go to the mini lessons. And what these are, these are videos. And this one has 12 videos. Um, and you can watch them. And, it, and basically, the, the instructor goes through, talks you through, walks you through the lessons, writes things down. This is a style of learning called underwriting. And you might have, like when you're in first grade, that might be how you learn to write. You know, they, they have these samples and you, you wrote the letters right underneath them. It's called underwriting. It's a little bit more advanced than just writing letters, but it's kind of see it, hear it, do it. And then the goal is, is that by doing that, when you come to the homework, uh, then you'll be able to apply it. And you'll also have some notes. So this is kind of, instead of a, a textbook, You've got a workbook that you're filling out and putting in your notes on how things happen. Okay, so you go through each of these. This is the goal, uh, and they are videos. So if, again, if you're understanding some things and you want to speed it up, that's that's totally your call. You can make them large screen as well. Um, once they're going, you can make them full screen. You can even go to the YouTube and and look at other ones, uh, but they will, uh, this one's like five or three minutes. So some of them, they, they try to make them shorter, five to six minutes, not too long, because you know, if you make a mistake in the middle of a really long video, then you got to start over. So uh, making short videos usually helps. Okay. And then you get advertisements popping up too. Okay. So that's the idea. Um, watch, you know, that's part of the way of learning. When you come to class, I'm not going to necessarily repeat what the many lessons have given you. Uh, what I will go off of is these practice problems. So these are some printed practice problems. And uh, I will use this uh, sort. And they're very similar to the many lesson problems, uh, but that's, that's why they're called practice. But a little different, so I'll, I'll probably run class from here, but I won't do the exact same ones. You could also kind of use these if you look at them in advance um, to do the to do the work. Okay. And that gets us all to the the homework. So I don't. It's not like a we got a textbook and I assign you a few problems. It's we've got online homework here. And see how many? There's 41 questions. Um, your goal is to. You know, do pretty well on I don't know, 70, 80 percent of it, 100 percent of it. You don't have to get 100 percent, but it's this is the place where you learn how to do it. If you're familiar with Math AS, you've probably seen this before. Let me just choose one of these. So they'll give you a question. You'll answer it um, by clicking it. Oftentimes they have helps here. They've got videos or examples you can look at. The other help is you've got message the instructor about this. So if you've tried it and had some problems, this sends me an email with a copy of the question. Um, and then if you let me know what you're struggling with, 
I can sometimes help you. In fact, sometimes I can just send back and say, oh, you just missed this part. Uh, some students will just send me the, vid the question with nothing in it, uh, and I can see if you're struggling with this, but I'm not sure exactly what it is. So those things typically I'll say I'll ask in class, you know, maybe we need to go over this or something. But if you can give me some kind of a heads up on what was what you're struggling with with the question, oftentimes I can answer it. Okay. And then you submit it, and it tells you whether you're right or wrong, and oh, I got this wrong. Uh, so I got three tries at it. So I could try it again, try it again. After the third time, it will give me the answer. If I still have it wrong, I could try a similar one. And hopefully I've learned what I was getting wrong. Um, and when I try a similar problem, now I can get it right. Okay, so that's kind of the goal of working through these. Okay, and so that's, that's really all you have to do for each of the lessons. Just the, the online homework. And you could jump to it if you want. Uh, there's another, so that's, that's sort of how it's supposed to run is you print out the mini lesson or you have the mini lesson, you watch the videos, teach yourself the material, and then you do the homework. And then we do that three times or four times and then we take a test over that material. Uh, however, I found that a number of you probably have had some of this content in classes before. And so you know some of it, but maybe you're not strong on other parts of it. So what I do allow is this, uh, this down here, there's an online quiz. Most people think a oh, quiz, that must be like a you know, test or anything. It's, uh, it, it, there is no points associated with it. It won't hurt you, it won't help you, or might help you actually. You could look at this and say, hey, I think I know this stuff pretty well. Let me just see how I do on the quiz. And so when you go to the quiz, you'll see it's a lot less problems. The only thing is, is that with the quizzes, there are no helps. There's still message to the instructor, which is kind of cool, but uh, there are no video helps, I don't think. Let's see, let me check it out. Yeah, they took out the video helps. And usually on the quizzes, I think they mark it right or wrong the first time. Let's just give it a try. I'll put in an answer, I'll hit submit. I know I didn't answer at all, but let's see. Well, let me try it again. Let's see, three, zero, let's, see, let's try to get it right this time. I think it should be negative five. Let's see if it lets me do it again. Oh, it does. Give me some points, even. So I guess you got a couple tries on these one, probably three tries. Um, so the quizzes are here. They just don't have the support. Okay. You don't have to do the quizzes, but you might try to do them. It might be extra to you know, convince yourself that you understand it. You could also jump to them at the start. And if you do really well on them, just email me, say, hey, little crow, I did fine on the quiz. I, I know this stuff. Give me some points, throw me a bone, whatever, however you want to put it. But um, you could kind of use it as a self-assessment. Okay. And again, as long as you're doing well, as long as you're understanding the material, I'll find a way, we'll find a way to do it. And we'll find a way that works for you. So standard way, Watch the videos, do the homework, you're good. Um, and, you know, along with those lines, if you're understanding, um, you know, as far as class attendance, you, you can keep track on by what's going on uh, online and, um, and such. I find that this class has more scheduled time than, most, than a, a lot of students need. Some, some students need it, so everyone's different. Um, so again, you can kind of, again, there's two ways to attend, either watching the video version or being here in class. Uh, and it's not that I'm trying to get everyone to not come to class because I need some people to come to class to ask the questions. That's what makes it live, right? That's what makes it interesting. And I know some of you are going to need it, but I know some of you will have a learning style where you'll be just fine uh, the other way. And actually, you may save yourself. You know, I don't know, how many of you drive like a half an hour to get here or something? Right. So you could save yourself an hour a day. Sometimes that might, you could maybe get more done that way. So I just want to provide the resources that work for you. Okay, so that's, that's how the lessons work. Um, we notice you don't have to have lesson one done next week. At the start, or Monday we're going to go into it. I'll explain it. Um, 
Wednesday, we'll work on it again. So we've got that time. I kind of give the same, I give the breadth of the content of the mini lessons, but I do it in a different way. So you can try a little bit of both and see what works. You might want to watch come to class first, see how that how our interactions work. If that works for you, maybe you don't need the videos. Uh, you may want to watch some of the videos and you might like one more over the other. Okay, uh, Or you might need both because sometimes the videos show them a, uh, in a different way. Sometimes seeing things two different ways is helpful. Yes? Is there just one of those videos per lesson? There are. Usually most of them have about like 12 videos per lesson. But they're short. They're three to five minutes videos. So it's... Um, I added them all up, but they're, they're like an hour to an hour and a half of video watching uh, per lesson. But remember, each lesson is really designed to be a whole week worth of work. And on a four credit class, they say, you know, you should be expecting somewhere between eight to 12 hours of learning time devoted for this particular class. So, you know, if you watch the videos for an hour and that does it for you and an hour of homework, you've got, you know, it's two hours, that's, that's good. It's really the goal, or not the goal, but the expectation is that it would take you about eight hours. So I've got students that, man, I spent four hours on the homework. I said, great, that's about what you spent. That's another four, and you've got your time in. Uh, but again, make sure it's successful. Okay. So quizzes are there for your your use, or your you can ignore them if you want. That's up to you. Um, okay, and that's pretty much math AS. And we'll, again, we do it. First lesson, second lesson, we just keep going through it. Um, and that's where Canvas kind of comes in, because Canvas is where I provide links to the practice tests and links to the videos of the course that we're going to make and all those kind of things. So have we been in Canvas yet? I don't think. Or not, I mean, in class, you probably have been. Let's go take a look. Learn.maricopa.edu. And I'll just highlight a few things that we're going to walk around with, and then we'll do about 30 to 40 minutes of extra credit type work. That's not the right course. 21. So you should see, let me go into student view. So this is sort of what you should see when you come into math or to Canvas. Um, and again, I think the, I did send out an announcement, didn't I? Okay, if you didn't get it, make sure your email is connected to the Canvas, because that's how I'll let you know about things. I'll send out an announcement, and it'll link back here. So there was, a, the syllabus was in here. You could download it here, and then the instructions for Math AS are here. Um, again, you've already got those. Modules are here, and let's see what I've, I got I've got some resources, so even stuff for the final uh, final exam are still here. Um, there's some calculator things, and there's some class notes. These are from a couple of years ago, but they're they're probably still valid. Um, I'll get those updated. But in like in lesson one, when I do the less when I when we go over the lesson for lesson one, that's where the videos will be posted and such. And what you'll see uh, later today, I'll add in a thing of introductory or first day lesson, and I'll put the video from the class that we're taking right now, plus uh, the PowerPoint that I'm going to use, any resources we went over, um, will be right there. So you can basically come into modules, and you can keep track um, of what's going on in class. That's pretty much what Canvas is for. The other thing is, is the gradebook. The official gradebook is the Canvas gradebook. Not the Math AS one. I, you know, uh, so some people say, well, Math AS says I only got 87%, but I should have got this much. And I said, well, look at Canvas. Canvas is the one that counts. And that's where the test scores will be and everything. OK, so we got our resources, Math AS. We've got Canvas, which is kind of for communication and um, posting videos and grades. Any questions? So there's no work in Canvas. Right. It's right. all in mapping. Yeah, the only thing that will be here is like practice tests practice. that you can then print out. But I will also have those in class. So it's right. It's really just going to be the place of this is what happened in class. And so if you missed it, you can get it. But if you're in class, 
you should be able to get all this stuff. Um, is the link for the video, or will the link for the videos be in Canvas? It will. Um, yes. And I'll try to so I'll try to keep Math AS clean that this is just from course to course. This is the prepared stuff by someone. It was actually done by uh, one of our instructors here, so it is uh, locally made. But um, we'll use Canvas as the current running course, and Math AS is the homework and the the textbook part. Great. Okay. So I'm going to switch things up a little. bit. Bit. Let's see. Let's see if I switch over here. Okay. Let's see how this. Okay, I'm here. Okay, so it works. So I'm gonna be. I gotta be over here. I gotta make sure that it's recording it right. How many of you would like to learn how to get a free lunch? Yes. Okay. Good. We'll do this. Um, this is a technique, a trick that I picked up when I was first came down here and uh, they asked me to go speak to some fourth graders about being a math professor or something. I don't, I don't know why they wanted me, but uh, I was scared because, you know, that, that TV show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Well, I wasn't sure I was smarter than a fourth grader, so I, uh, I said, how am I going to talk about math? So I found these, I said, anyway, I found this little technique that made me feel smart about math. And again, I'm a math teacher. I, I struggled with math. I finally got some success, but my degrees actually are in math education, so it's really education with a minor in math. The only thing that even qualified me to teach at a community college is as um, I paid somebody some money and I got a no. <laughs> really, um, is that I took I was going to be an actuarial, so I took some some math classes to try to do that, but in the process of doing that. Uh, a guy who had been an actuary was coming to be a professor, and we got talking. And I says, maybe I should just do this professor things. But fortunately, I took enough hardcore math classes that they would let me teach at a community college instead of just. But really, I was my certificates are for high, for high school teaching. Uh, but I didn't do so well with high school students because I'm I guess I'm too soft or something, and they're too hard. But you guys are look like a gentle group that will be kind to me, so we'll we'll get along just fine. Teacher said he was afraid of the students, did you? But um, anyway, we'll work it out. So this is what you do: is you go first of all, you go arrange to meet your friends or or somebody. It doesn't have to be friends, uh, like at happy hour. And I find it's best if you show up a little bit late so that they've already maybe had one or two rounds of drinks, because then they won't be as sharp in their thinking. And by the way, I stopped drinking years ago, and the world is much. Uh, it's more happy for that, but so you choose whether to drink or not to drink. I mean, it's an experience that people go through. And but again, was it skillful or not skillful? I found uh, I did a lot of unskillful drinking, but um, my mom still drinks one or two wines, and she's she's fine with that. Um, I'd have to drink the whole bottle before I was fine, so uh, I stopped. Anyway, but I still go to happy hour because they got good uh, deals on appetizers and stuff, and people are, are a little bit more generous. So. You go to the happy hour and you go to say, hey guys, uh, I, j I just had this math class and I, I'm, I got really smart in math. I can, I can do mental math and I can blow you away. So yeah, yeah, right. So what you do is you make sure someone has a calculator. So, so someone have a, even a phone calculator. Someone got a calculator? Out? Ready? Okay, so I, you need somebody to verify because it's going to blow them away how, how, in, how, how you do this mathematics so, so smoothly. You're going to do multiply two-digit numbers, which doesn't sound like a great feat, but it's more than most people can do. And I'm going to do it for you. Um, and, and as you're watching, watch for the pattern so you can see how you do it. You gotta, you'll see that this is why you go to the happy hour after they've had a few drinks, because you don't want them to get the pattern, and then they won't buy you your food. But if they if you blow them away after a couple times and say, okay, you're, you're buying my meal, or whatever you're going to partake in. Okay, so this is what I need from you. I need someone to give me a two-digit number. Twelve. Good. So we're going to take twelve. And I get to choose the second number. That's the that's the key part. You always got to be the one to choose the second. Number. Um, let me show you something. Oh, this is okay. 
I'm going to choose 18, and that's really, that's like 216. Did I get it right? Let's see, you got to have it verified because. Yes. Yes, of course I got it right. I know I got it right. But, um, <laughs> let's see. And it's showing up on the camera. Doesn't that look cool? But that was too easy, right? 12 times 18. Anyone should have known that. So give me something harder. 83 times uh, 56. Well, no, no, no. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> I get to choose the second number. That one would be hard. <laughs> but you don't want to like 83. See, I get to choose the second one. So I'm going to choose 87. And that gives me like 7,221. He's memorized all these. No. So that's, <laughs> see, I, it, I, I can't be memorizing because you're giving me the number, but I get to choose the second one. So, and you're going to see in a moment there's a, there's a, the second number is the key. And maybe some of you, has anyone spotted it yet? Okay, you spotted it. What, what am I doing? So, okay, instead of telling us, let's, uh, let's try another number. Let me, uh, how about uh, 96? If someone gave you the number 96, what number are you going to choose? 102? 37. Great. 102. 101. 101. Good. Okay. Um, Let's look at these numbers. 83. I'm sorry. 42. They gave me 12. I came back with 18. They gave me 83. I came back with 87. We're matching the first number. We're matching the first number. That's good. For the second number, what am I doing? You got it. Four. Eight, two is ten. Three and seven is ten. So six and four is ten. And I'm going to explain the culture behind where mathematics comes from, and you'll see why this particular one works. You might have spotted that two times eight is sixteen, and three times seven is twenty-one. So the back part of this answer, you're right, is just going to be six times four is twenty-four. But I do that second because otherwise they'll pick that up too quick. What, the, what really throws people off is this is not one times one, it's one times two. This is not eight times eight, it's eight times nine. And you're gonna see this is a trick from India. It's, they had a sutra that's called by one more than before. So we're not gonna take nine times nine, we're gonna take nine times 10, which is, and the answer to this problem is 9,024. And then you just practice a little bit. So notice I didn't say 9024 because then they, they might catch up. I said 9024. I tried to look like I'm thinking really hard, you know, make myself look real smart. But it was, you know, as I had it from the beginning. And actually, when I first started doing this, I would do the back part first because that's easy. And then I had to remind myself one more than before because I would go 9 times 9 is 81 and I'd blow it. I got it wrong. So you got to kind of get it right so the first time. How do we get the second number? The, no, the, oh. Yeah. So that was 8 times 9 is 72. And then I, so you do have to have that in your mind that so your multiplication up to 9 times 9. Uh, but instead of saying 72, I said 7,200 and then keep on going. And then the back ones, I just multiply. You know, no special deal. Uh, this will always work for all those digits. It will work above 100, but then you've got to be able to multiply numbers like 11 and 12 and that was a little bit too much for my, my taste, but you could do that. But yes, the first numbers are always the same. Second numbers have to add to 10, and it's just the way it will work. It won't work if, I mean, you could try something close, but 83 times 86 is not 7 to, I think what's that, 18? This is not the correct answer. Okay. It doesn't follow it because this doesn't add to 10. Right? It doesn't work because it's, you know, it's only a little bit more. So. It is a special case, and there's about, uh, this book I was reading is where I got it out of. I didn't make it up. It's, it's an ancient thing, but uh, it spent about a page describing why it worked. I couldn't really ever understand that, but I just, I understood how to do it, and I pull it out on people, and they think I'm really good, and I don't, if you don't tell them, you just walk away. Um, <laughs> they think you're, you're a genius, right? And again, your friends, they'll maybe buy you some free food. Um, I'm always up for some free food. But that's a trick. And what it did is it hooked me on a whole system of doing mathematics called Vedic math. And that's what I'm going to share with you for the, maybe the next 20 minutes. Um, and again, it's just going to be, let's see right there, that's good. Let me 
switch back here to that, and we're going to take a look. Let's see if this works. Yeah, and feel free. I mean, it's, I used to try to make breaks in the class and such, but when you need to take a break, go ahead and take a break. Um, I kind of of the mind to let's just keep going, and then when we're done, if we get done, you know, try to get done a little early. Because um, I don't know, when I was a student, if you get a break, why come back, right? Just go off the back. Okay, so we got that up there, good, and it looks good here. So this is just a, it's kind of a time to introduce myself to you so you can understand where I come from when I teach math, when I think about math. Uh, myself and uh, some of the other faculty, native faculty have designed something called the Indigenous Scholars Institute. Uh, you might see a building that's going up back here somewhere. It's going to be the business uh, for business, business department, and um, I think one other thing, I think receiving, and the Indigenous Scholars Institute. Uh, we're working with the administration on, uh, we had the idea, we proposed an idea. It's maybe not necessarily the same idea. We're, we don't know if we're all in agreement, but what the goal is, is that it's a center to help people uh, see what it means to be an Indigenous person, indigenous learner. And I'll just give you a little bit of my take on it. And it comes from my background. Uh, on my mother's side, I'm Chippewa Cree and French. So their their mette, her last name is La Fontaine. So a lot of French surnames in there. Uh, so it's, it's a mixed culture for a long period of time. My father is Saxon. Um, great grandparents came over from England around 1890 or something. Uh, and what I used to think of myself is I'm half this, half that, or quarter this, or whatever. Uh, but when I got to, I got to reading this book, and it, it was from a Lakota man who was also Irish, and he could see that uh, when he looked at his, the history of his peoples, um, that he, the Irish people were a tribal, a clans type people, that they, they had a period of time, but it, he just had to go back further in history. And on my father's side, he, so one of the things my grandfather wasn't very proud of, but he found out we were descended from uh, Anglo king or Saxon kings. I can't remember. There's there actually two separate tribes: the Anglo's and the Saxons. Even though we call them Anglo-Saxons now, but I guess we were the Saxon side. Uh, we were descended from Saxon kings, but at that time they lived in villages, and they were kings lived in a mud hut like everyone else. I, in that statement that my dad gave me, it got me connected with my mother's people as well, who lived in earth lodges and such. So. We all have, we all come from a history of, of tribal people, of people connected to the earth, being indigenous peoples. Um, and that's kind of what the center is, is designed to um, foster. So I'm going to go through a few of these slides a little bit quicker. Uh, there's a little video here. Uh, my wife and I started a nonprofit organization called Open Global Village. So on some of the slides, you'll see a little logo and stuff. That's sort of where I put everything. It's for educational projects. We did, uh, uh, back in 2011 and 12, we did an education abroad program to Thailand where we took uh, people, students who wanted to be teachers, elementary teachers uh, from here, and we took them and put them in schools in Thailand for three weeks. Uh, we also did a lot of excursions and stuff, but the goal was is to find out how culture is involved in education. And the best way to learn about culture is to get out of your own culture. So if you're part of a dominant society, you don't see your culture because it's all around you. Uh, if you're part of a minority culture, you see it all the days because your culture is not the dominant culture. Um, but when you go wherever you are, if you get out of your culture and go into some other dominant culture, you start to see how culture affects your life and your learning. Um, one of the things that 
I picked up was this from one of my mentors is how many of you have kind of seen this thing that the US really sucks at math that they're like you know here it is 25th in the, out of the 30 countries uh, the Western Europe or whatever there's all these countries here um, and you see these sort of reports that America's not doing so well in math however this guy who was one of my mentors that I've never met but I, I learned his way of teaching at, uh, I went to one of his workshops, the one I was hoping to meet him, he was sick, so I didn't get to meet him. But at Oregon State, we implemented uh, his way of doing things. He's a, a math educator as well. What he did is he took that same data and broke it down. He found in the US, if you break it down by who gets a free lunch or not, that the US scores up here at the top. On the other one, we were way below, Finland was at the top. Look at this. The U.S. now is, if, if, you're in the, if you're in the zip code that gets between 0 and 10% free lunch, you're in a wealthy neighborhood, uh, you're likely to be in this group that's going to score at the top of the world. But if you're in a neighborhood or in an area where the schools are getting 50 to 100% free lunches, you're living in poverty, that, oh, what happened? Talking the slide change. Huh? So let's go back to this. Uh, so anyway, it's not that we don't know how to teach math. It's not that we don't know how to learn math. It's just that we're doing it in a way that favors those with money are getting a better education than those without the money. Uh, so he's got some things to to help change that. You know, if we can teach well, if we can learn well. Let's overcome this, this issues of economic things. And again, it's a bigger problem. It's not just what goes on in the classroom, it goes on everywhere else, but um, we can get at it. What I found in, in my trips to Thailand, and my wife, as you noticed, maybe, maybe you noticed, she is from Thailand, and so we put this project together as we went back that in Thailand, uh, they have this conception of, uh, of building people for human development. And this is from uh, Kofi Annan, uh, Secretary General of the United Nations, or he was, the previous one. Uh, he had this definition of what it means to be for human development. It says to empower all people, not, not just the wealthy, not, you know, all people through education, opportunity, and health care. Okay? Because if you don't have health, what can you do, right? So these three things are needed to live healthy, knowledgeable, and creative lives. And then... In Thailand, Kofi Annan is giving the first ever, and actually, what I, I can't find another one. It seems like the only one. This was in uh, 2006, the Lifetime Achievement Award to the King of Thailand for his work in human development. And this is what he had to say when he was doing this. He says, as the world's development king, your majesty has reached out to the poorest and the most vulnerable people of Thailand, regardless of their status, ethnicity, or religion listen to their problems and empower them to take their lives in their own hands. Uh, and going through there, there's many things that the king done. He passed away uh, last year. Uh, his son is now uh, on the throne and, and hopefully we're hoping that he is uh, as engaged with the people as his father was. One of the things I remember learning about his father in the 50s, late 50s, there was an a epidemic of leprosy. You know what leprosy is? You know, your nose starts falling off. And it's pretty bad and it, it, it's very contagious. What happened was if if your parents had leprosy, you were not allowed, the schools weren't allowing you to come in because they thought, you know, we're going to get leprosy from you. Well, the king realized that that wasn't, you know, the kids didn't have leprosy. They didn't have leprosy. It didn't matter that their parents did. Uh, so he put together a school out of his own money. He built a school for student, for the kids who had leprosy to come to. And by the dorms. When it opened up, he went there himself. He touched the kids to show these kids need opportunity as well. And just because their parents have leprosy, you know, they're not contagious. They're fine. Uh, and many other things he did. He did over 4,000 projects. Um, and he came up with a lot of them educational. He had a, basically a new paradigm uh, for education. And I'm just going to go a little lightly over this. He had four stages, but the first one started with determination with faith. Okay. So that's why you're here. You, you're here because you have faith that going to school is going to improve your opportunities to get a better job, to build a better life for yourself. Or why would you be here, right? Or maybe you just have nothing better to do. But uh, 
I'd be in bed sleeping if I thought that was, you know, that was the case, because that's a, my favorite place to be. Okay. Then he goes to step two is seeking knowledge with morality. So we're, we're trying to get our knowledge, but it, it has to be done with morality. And again, that gets back to when we're doing something skillful, we're, we're not hurting anybody. We're, we're helping people. Um, using the knowledge wisely, and then finally keep abreast of changes. So this is like the lifelong learning thing. Um, we're going to focus on uh, the details of number two, which basically gets acquired knowledge from others. That's where I got this. I didn't come up with this, but somebody came up with this nice little trick. And I'm going to show you a few other techniques that make learning math maybe more fun. Because I was a math teacher who really didn't like math. You know, I went into math because actually I wanted to be a history teacher, but there were no jobs for history teachers, so I had enough math. So I'm a math teacher because I wanted a job. I'll be honest with you. It took me about eight years after doing it. I finally found some joy in doing math, but I never really had fun doing math. I was never a guy who liked math. Uh, it just paid the bills, but uh, you know. So, and then acquire the knowledge, contemplating, so looking into things, making sure you understand. And that's sometimes uh, I find students will work through a problem and then they just keep going on to the next one without reflecting back on what they did. And sometimes if you just take that moment, look back at the problem. How did I solve that? Okay, I see that. It's a little bit deeper now, and you've got it forever. Or sometimes if you're just trying to get the homework done and working through problems, you get done and then you look back, I, I can't even remember what I did, right? So uh, the reflection is important and then the practice is important. Um, some of the things I found is also uh, gets into psychology. So when you're learning math, what they found is that a word problem in math where it goes first is this place of the brain called the amygdala. Does anyone know what the amygdala is? famous for or what its job is. A thing called an amygdala. This is the part of the brain. Let's hit one more. Yes. Isn't that the processing part of the brain? Processing a particular thing. What does it process? It process what was that? Information. Emotion. Okay. It's the emotional center of processing. Uh, what they found is that it comes in here and so people who struggle with math, people with math anxiety it's because it's going into the amygdala and that emotion that you're, you're remembering that, that day in third grade when the teacher just you know, embarrassed you in front of everybody and made you go do that math problem. Whatever it was, that, that's sticking with you and you're not able to do the problem because it's, it's all this emotions involved. Or the, the, even they found that even when the teacher's frowning, now I can't get it right. You, know, you, see, you see negativity. But what they also found is that the, when you stress out about this, that you actually may be, uh, if you can overcome this, you might be the most enthusiastic about math. Okay. So you might be the math genius that you never knew you were because you, you just couldn't get past the emotional side. What I've done is I'm going to show you a math, a uh, brain of the map, a map of the brain. See, I told you I'm dyslexic. I switch things all the time. Uh, a map of the brain, and we're going to see how this works. And then I'm going to show you a few techniques, uh, and I'm going to show you how to do multiplication with your hands, how you can actually turn your hands into calculators in, in a way that you probably haven't seen before. Okay. So here's our brain functions. So we've got, I'll try to stay here, um, let's see, down here, emotional memory, right? That's the amygdala area. That's where the math problems come. Where's the math processing center? Up in here, mental math. And what's right next to the mental math area? The fingers. And so, and there's actually a student that pointed this out for me. I just said the amygdala was here, the math was here, how do we do this? And they, after they went through things, they said, yeah, the fingers are there. So if we use the fingers, maybe that's going to help. That's the right side of the brain. If we go to the left side of the brain, we see the same thing. Emotional memory, math symbols are up here, and right next to them are the fingers, the motor area. So the one of the things, the biggest problems we might have in math is that we're just sitting and doing it. And the part of the brain that controls the math is right next to the part of the brain that controls the movement of the body. We need to move more. But in school, do they let us move? No. You start moving around, they slap you down. Right? Quiet. Don't move. Just sit and listen. Um, so we need more movement. And I'm going to show you how once we start doing math, we're actually going to do multiplication. It will involve our hands. It will involve movement. And so we're activating that part of the brain and just one more step over, 
there's the, the mental part of the brain that does math. Uh, when you're using your calculator, pushing buttons, that's using your fingers still. So, okay. So, different methods for counting. We'll do this just a little briefly. Um, I'm going to start counting, and if you'll, if you'll count along with me with your hands, however you count, uh, and then when I stop at the number, I'll ask you to freeze, and we'll just kind of see the different ways of counting, and I, I want you to kind of see how this involves uh, culture. So I'm just going to count, say, one, two, three. And what did you do? I went like this, so, okay, so there's a few of you went up that way, I guess. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of from the same track. Oh, good, I haven't seen that one in a while. Let's see, how many are from... Oh, you went up from the thumb. So we got going from the back, we got going up from the thumb, we got this same way. But I like this over here. Okay, what are you doing? I one, did one, two, one, two, three. So you're, you're counting, you're going to see that in the next slide. Um, it's kind of advanced. And, and I see people oftentimes with uh, like um, sign language. Have you used sign language? I do know a little bit. Okay, so if you know a sign language, it's a, it's a way of doing it. So um, here we go. This is some research done on different cultural groups and how they do. So here's tribe A. Some of you were that you start with the thumb and you go up this way. Okay, so that would be three. But notice tribe B. I didn't see anyone from tribe B. Tribe B starts with an open hand and counts down to five. So this is five for them. So can you imagine the cultural differences of tribe A and tribe B? Tribe B goes, uh, send me over five fish. Tribe A says, that guy's not hungry, he doesn't want anything, right? So they have a war over this little thing of, you didn't give me any fish and I was hungry. And the other guy says, well, you, you didn't look like you were hungry. So here's five or is it zero? What is it? It could be different culturally. Uh, C, this is kind of like what you're doing is you're counting and using it somehow as an indicator and then when it's done, it's done. And then D is some of us. And then some of you went from the back, that's maybe another round. But there used to be ways that was actually taught to us how to use our hands to do math. And from how we used our hands, how, how our culture, how our groups uh, used our, their hands to do math formed a whole mathematics. And we're going to see that there are different mathematics in the world that were formed by this. Um, how many of you know why there's 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour? Is it just like arbitrary? Have you ever thought of it? Because wouldn't it be easier if there's like 100 seconds in a minute? Wouldn't that fit math? Is it, how many of you have had to do some kind of math thing with time and you find out it's kind of difficult? It's yeah. rota rotation. It's a, yeah, you're going to see. It actually has nothing to do with anything physical in the world except for this, the way they saw their hands. That's all it is. It's not something physical. But we'll show you some things that are. Here's one method that is. So. One method of counting, and so most of us used our fingers for a one, two, three, but you could also count one, two, three with just the little segments. And if you do that, and th this is a system that was used in Indochina, uh, you could get 14, three on each finger, two on the thumb. And I'll debate with some people say, oh, I got three on my thumb too, but whatever you want. But they, they saw two on here. But you get 14 on this hand, 14 on this hand, you put them together, you have 28. Where do you see the number 28 in nature? our first test on Valentine's Day. How many days? February. February has 28 days. It is a, it's the remnant of a lunar system of counting. The, the moon goes around the earth. Or full moon to full moon is 28 days. In Indochina, they recognize that also a woman's menstrual cycle is 28 days. In fact, the native culture oftentimes says a woman is on her moon, that connection there with it. And so what they used to do is a woman would tie a string around her finger at the end of her menstrual cycle and that would help her decide whether she, you know, the next time whether she got pregnant or not because in their culture it was important to know the day of conception, not just the day of birth. So they were trying to find the day. They used their hand as a calendar, tie a string around, a, a, a ribbon around a thing to remember the date of you know, the last menstrual cycle so that if the next month it came around and there was no menstrual cycle, oh, I must have got pregnant, then they could pinpoint which night it might have been on. Interesting. How many of you have been told, like your mom told you, you want to remember something? They say tie a string around your finger to remember. Well, that's left over from that cultural when we were when the calendars were lunar, and we had 20, every month had 28 days. There are systems that were that way. Okay. There's other ways of counting that go to 20. So you know the knuckles on the back. 
get up to 20. If you lived on the islands in nice soft sand, you didn't have to have shoes, so you could have fingers and toes and count to 20. There are systems, at least it's documented, it's not just a joke, but sometimes we say a joke, I gotta count to about 10 and take off my shoes, but there are systems that used it. Uh, this next system is gonna explain to you where the sun comes from, uh, the 60 seconds. Okay, so the Babylonians, on through the British, the, so it comes from the root of the English language, so the English language speakers all have this. What they do is they use the thumb as a tool, and they counted the, the segments here, so you get 12. So that's why we got a dozen roses, a dozen um, eggs, a dozen donuts, everything's in 12 when you're over here. You go to, to Asia, everything's grouped in tens. Most of the world groups things in tens. I go to buy eggs in, in Thailand, I buy 10 eggs. Why do you want 12? You only get that in America. Maybe in, maybe in Europe, or maybe in uh, Britain. Uh, but the real interesting thing is, is what did they do with this other hand? Multiply. Good. They kept track of how many 60s they had. So you have 12, 24, 36, 48, 60. There's our 60 seconds. There's our 60 minutes uh, in an hour. Uh, if you take trigonometry, there's 360 degrees in a circle. It's a whole mathematics of the different mathematics than what was come up with in India. And that's where the basis of this comes from, is India. And the basis of our modern mathematics is all from India. But back in the times when we had different types of math, English speakers were doing math based on 12, not 10. And that's maybe why we struggle a bit. So, Again, I could, this is part of like a six hour workshop that I've, I've cut down, but I, I don't cut it down very well. So uh, you start seeing language. So one of the things, I, if you look at language, the language of math, that's the other part, is actually I wanted to study languages rather than math. I studied Arabic for a year, I studied Thai, I studied a little bit of Chinese. But what I found is that all Asian languages, once you get to 10, the word for what we call 11 is always the word for 10 with one more. So in Thai it's, 10 is sip, 11 is sip at, sip song, sip song. So you start seeing it perfectly a base 10 language. Okay, does that make sense? What about English? We get over here and we get to 10. When you get to the next one, do you see the word 10 in, in 11? I don't, I never did. Uh, 12, no. But 13, you sort of start to see the teen part is the 10, so three with 10 or 10 with three more. Um, but that's where it, it causes this problem. And, I, and some people say, well, it's a minor problem. It's just two numbers, right? But I, when I was a kid, I used to, I, I invented 11 teen, partly selfishly, because my mom said when you're a teenager, you get, you know, stay up later and all that kind of stuff. And so I told my mom, I'm, I'm 11 teen now, so I get to stay up an extra hour, right? She, no, she wasn't buying it. But uh, to me, that made sense, 11 teen. It, otherwise, it didn't, it, it was something weird. If you're a Spanish speaker, where does the 10 start? You want to speak Spanish? It doesn't start with 11, right? 10 is Diaz. 11 is not Diaz and 1, no. Um, you have to get all the way to 16. Dese seis, literally 10 with 6 more. 15 is its own word. Quince. Quince. Yeah. My, my, my accent is terrible. Mm -hmm. I've taken Spanish 101 like five times, but I keep dropping off about halfway through. Um, Anyway, but you look at the culture, Hispanic culture, 15 is a, is a very powerful number, isn't it? It's when a girl becomes a woman, the quinceañera. And so it's, it's, it's recorded in their mathematics as well. But here's the deal is you think about the reporting and math performance. Asian countries do well, especially in the early years. English speakers, Spanish speakers, we all suck. But it's, I think it has to do with, a lot with our language, our language on base 10. Um, one more thing, and then we'll um, pack it up. I've been working with the Yaki, uh, Pasca Yaki tribe, and I looked at their language, and this is another thing I've noticed in working with native cultures, is that oftentimes native languages, indigenous languages, are base 10. And you'll notice their word for 10 is, uh, is that Wahamini, something like that, and then 11 is Wahamini Anasuna, literally 10 with one more. It's a base 10. So as we start using indigenous languages, what I've seen in the research is that oftentimes they do nothing to improve the math except teach it in the native language, and the math scores go up. 
So when you're teaching math with a base 10 language, it makes more sense. Um, and it's also a base 20 language, but it's interesting. Uh, the language of my uh, mother's people, the Chippewa, is also, as you see, 10 is Madaswe, and 11 is Madaswe Asha Bishwe, literally one more than 10. So based in language. So these are the things in, in mathematics we, we have that nobody, at least nobody told me, I don't know about you, but I didn't want to tell you that language, the way that our English language might be something that hindered our mathematical performance. No, at least not to me. Um, the fact that we could learn to use our hands to do mathematics. So I think I've got one more. This all comes from India, so we'll do that. But um, what I'm going to leave you with is that it's 10 to 15 times faster. It works with both sides of the brain. You saw this trick. I want to at least expose you to this trick. It's using the hands to multiply. So I'm going to get through these next few slides real quick. Uh, this will be posted there. Um, see if I can at least expose you to this part. This is kind of interesting. And, and the PowerPoint will be online, so you can uh, play with it if you like. I want to show you how to multiply with your hands. The trick is, if I'm going to represent 8 with one hand, how am I going to do that? Well, what they came up with is, is thinking of the complement. If I've got 8 up, how many down do I have? 2. So I can represent 8 with two fingers down. So thinking of that, what would seven look like with one hand? Just three down, okay? And watch what happens. If I take this hand, eight and seven, and I multiply, I do it by taking the up fingers. How many up fingers are there? Five, so I add them together, but I count my up fingers as tens, so that's actually 50. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And what I do with the down fingers, knock them together because I multiply them. What's two times three? 56. And what's 7 times 8? So the down fingers, 50 for the up fingers, 2 times 3 gives us 6, 56 is 8 times 7. Um, and this is one that works for me because I made my own flashcards because I was cheap when I was, I didn't have any money when I was a kid, you know, my parents had all the money. I, I made my own flashcards, but I made a mistake when I did 8 times 7, I said it was 54 or something. I mixed up 8 and nine and six. So, but I memorized them very well. I just memorized the facts wrong. And I've never been able to unmemorize what I did. But now I've got this trick when I want to, and you might see me do this sometime. I'm going, oh yeah, this is the one that's 56. Because um, the next one, well, eight times six, let's do that. So eight is still two. Six, that's my, uh, you see why I didn't become an art instructor. So, uh, but I was using a mouse. I, I, you know, Excuses, but it's my hieroglyphics. So that's eight. Six is four away, so that goes down. So right, forty. Two times four is eight. So eight times six is forty-eight. Okay, and it works. There's the forty. There's the two times four. It's forty-eight, and it works for all of these. But I want to leave. What well, I keep saying, I'm going to leave you with, and I keep going right. But uh, this is really cool because that that's cool. Most of us though has a, have probably eventually learned art up to 9 times 9, or maybe up to 10 times 10. Uh, but this is where it becomes even more powerful. But could you imagine if you struggle, or if you had kids that struggled learning the multiplication tables, these methods, all you have to know is up to 5 times 5. So what's 12 times 13? Well, let's do this a little differently. What we do is the down fingers represent the amount above 10. So 12 is 2 above, so 2 go down. 13 is 3 above, 3 go down. And then when you multiply, you have to remember that 10 times 10 is 100. 100, so that's where we start. So we're going to start with 100. We don't do anything with the up fingers. This is because we're above 10, the method changes. But what we do is we take those down fingers, I call this my Spider-Man pose, uh, and we add the down fingers. So 30 plus 20, whenever you're adding their 10, so that's 30 plus 20 is a is 50, so we're at 150, and then we again multiply the down fingers. Six. Two times six, it's 156. And I, that's not one that I memorized either. But now I could do up to 15 times 15 with my hands, with this little trick, if I, if I learned it. And my goal is, that, you know, for us maybe that's not a big deal, but you know, in high school, 
think about how empowering that makes you feel mathematically if you can multiply up to 15 times 15. And I think that's one of the things that, as a lot of our students aren't given, that's what I wasn't given, is a confidence in math that, hey, I could do this. I couldn't remember 7 times 8 or 9 times 6. I get those mixed up. And so I was constantly feeling less than better, less than good, whatever that means. Um, and if I had these tricks, and then I could pull them up, then I, I'd be able to get the math facts that helped me succeed down the road. Um, in fact, I didn't even take math my senior year of high school. I dropped out of, not out of high school, but I dropped, I, seventh, or what was it, 11th grade. Halfway through, my teacher was kind of picking on me. I just showed him I'm not going to take math from him or anyone else ever again in my life. Uh, then I found out, well, I was either going to dig ditches, which was really hard. I did it for one day, or I could go to school. So I took my dad up. He said, if you, if you go to school, I'll, if you can stay at home, and I'll pay for it. You know, or you want to live on your own and dig ditches, you go ahead and do that. I said, no. It's too hard to dig ditches. So <laughs> that's why I'm here. Anyway, I look forward to, now again, while these may not specifically relate to intermediate algebra, I hope to we'll get some ways of thinking. Next week, we'll start into lesson one, and we'll keep it moving. Canvas. So any, all this stuff will go into Canvas. And I'll send out an announcement from Canvas to let you know when it's there. Destiny. Oh, I forgot to take roll. Oh, well, I guess everybody was here. I know you're here. Thanks, Destiny. I signed up for the tutoring uh, for Friday, but do you yes. think I will need it if we have one hour of tutoring here with 121? You might not. Um, why don't you come for the first? I mean, it's, yeah. yeah I can come. Yeah. It's, uh, I hate to tell you you don't need it. You can all, actually you can sign up for up to the fifth week, so if you wanted to drop it and just keep coming, oh, and then if yeah, you need yeah. it, then sign up again. If you don't need it, you could stop coming, but you could kind of, because oh, yes. sometimes you won't know until maybe until the two or third it, week. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay, sorry, keep it there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah. Hi. Is this um, calculator Beautiful. effective? Because it's a TI-84, I don't know if it's Yeah, 83 different. is actually the same. It's a, just a little bit faster and more modern, but the, the button know. pushes are the same. Okay. Wait, one this I one's have. less modern? It's yeah, it's an older version. It doesn't okay. some of the printing is but it, it'll do exactly the same thing. Okay, and so it won't like make anything harder. No, no. All I know is I have a TI inspire. I don't know what the number. That's a different one. That's it's like um, a totally different I mean I can get it. There was a version that you had a different keyboard that made it into an eighty four. So bring it with you next time. We'll see it. It might be something. It's it's actually above and beyond what we do. Yeah. Okay. So for this book, like, what will be the benefits of like having it? Like what? Just if you do use it all, it's it's cheaper to have it already pre-printed than that. So but those are like the practice problems. Yeah, it's the same thing that's in all math. The homework, yes. But we're not those. printing it. Are yeah. We? Um, it's, a, it's the mini lessons. So if you do write in the mini lessons, you might want to print it. You don't have to. But it's. Does this have the homework problems too, or no? I believe so. It has. Uh, it has a practice. It has the mini lessons. I believe it has. It doesn't have the the, pra the homework problems are all actually online. Okay. So it doesn't have those. So it's mostly the, mm. the mini lessons. So we don't need that. It's not not in the no. necessary. Yeah. Okay. So what I do is I'd return it now since it's not open. They'll let you do that. Try it out. If you ever need it, they'll still have some. Um, but I would. I would try the system without it, and then you see if you need if you're. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. What did you say you can rent the calculator? The media center, which is the IT building. The IT building. Is this next to the SB building. Oh, yeah. okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Like perfect. Thank you. And they got a couple signs when you come in. They say calculators this way. Oh, well, I guess I could stop. But the, if we download and print the textbook, is that the same?